Hi everyone, this is Cindy and I'm here to work on Ephemera from a Bee Journal. I'm also here to use up book pages that are surrounding me because I've been sorting through books that I had purchased to use in junk journals and then have decided, okay, I'm going to take all the pages out, get rid of most of the pages. If there's anything in the pages I want to keep, I'll keep it. In the covers, I'll keep that sort of thing. So I've just been going through all these books. So I'm surrounded by book pages. So. I'm just trying to use them up and do ephemera at the same time. So I'm just going to show you some of the things I've started. Uh, and one of the things was I had the larger book pages, so I just made larger envelopes. Just uh, stitched <coughs> all around it, folded it up, and made a pocket envelope. These will be too big for most journals, but um, some will fit. Like one of my B journals will definitely fit in there. And also, I'm just going to use them to um, keep things collected. And I'll show you what I mean by that. And also, I can use them to put extra ephemera in for the journals, and they can just be um, sent with journals. So anyway, I have several of those I made. Um, this is a really large book, so um, I'm looking at Okay. Yeah, so I have some of those made, just envelopes just to have. And then uh, I have more of them, and I'm using them right now to collect my uh, things I'm going to show you, my ephemera. Okay, this one is, I was just sitting there, I had a pile of book pages, and I thought, what can I do? I need, you know, I made the same old pocket a hundred times, so what else can I do? So I thought, well, maybe I can <clears throat> make library pockets out of them. Um, and sure enough, you know, you can. They're, I mean... It's um, all different sizes, um, big, small, little. This is from um, a five ring binder on food. And same five ring, five ring binder on gardening. I just had these old vintage pages. You can see the coloring on them. They're great. So anyway, um, just a real quick reminder how to make a library pocket. There's many videos out there to show you how, but if you're just sitting in your chair and you got a book like this and you're thinking, I need to use these pages up, um, you can make some of these real quick. I just kind of fold it however high I want it, however high I want this sticking up. See, some of them are that far up, and that one's not as far up, and the last one I made is great big up. So it just kind of depends. You can always trim it down later if you think it's too tall. But in, in real life, book uh, pockets, uh, some of them stick way up. Okay, now, you could go to a scoring board and score half an inch down, but, you know, you can just eyeball it, too. So, and actually, if you're just using one page like I'm doing, and they're kind of vintage papers, the, they're going to tear on the scoreboard. So, anyway, I just folded it up, and then I just guesstimated at a half inch on both sides. It doesn't even matter if it's not one side's folded more than the other, because um, you won't see it. So, when you fold it out, the, the part that's got the longer fold is what you're going to cut off. And it, if you go just a little bit inside that uh, fold, it makes it a little bit easier. You can always trim it more later. And when you get to this fold, you're going to just do a diagonal. Like I said, there's a lot of videos out there that show this and maybe even show a better way to do it. Okay, then you fold it up, and then these little flaps are going to go over, and you're going to glue those down. And then you can keep the top like that, or you can round it. And I use my corner rounder, but, you know, it could be any corner punch. It could be a decorative punch. It doesn't have to be just the rounded one. So, anyway, so that's one thing I was just doing the other night, just seeing if I could, without the scoreboard, make a bunch of library pockets. So, made a bunch of those. And what did I do with the envelope there? In? Here it is. Okay. And then another thing I was doing, and this one, um, yeah, I've done a lot, and I've shown it several times. I take a book, I keep the pages intact, and I count over so many pages, and I've already glued that one, so I count over one, two, two pages, three pages, four pages, however thick you want it. Then I put in a sheet that's got blank paper on the back or lines. And then I take my glue stick, and I take the lid off, <laughs> maybe. I just glue it real quick, just enough to hold it. Oh, I did do three pages here. There's one. Do the same thing here. Just run some glue, enough to hold it. And then the third one. Okay, so what you're going to have is a paper with that you can write on, and then your book papers. And then I tear them out. 
and then I take my a pattern for uh, a tag, it can be any shape or size, just whatever you have, and I trace around it and then cut it out. And you can see, on this one you can see a little bit of the blue ink where I, I traced around one and cut it out. And then that gives you a tag, or it could be a journaling card, but a tag with lined paper on the back. And I, since I didn't go, wasn't real particular about the gluing, it's not glued down real well, So I, because I knew I was gonna stitch around mine. Now, if you were going to sew around it, then once you've got this cut out, then you can go back in and glue it down a little better. But this one I just decorated with a napkin, the little quote and then a picture. And here's just one blank one, two blank ones, um, just waiting for something to happen to them. And you can see the vintage paper here. And they have lines on the back. This one, um, I just did some cutouts from a book. And then that little bee came from the Hello Susan um, digital kit, vintage bees that I'm gonna be using for the journal. So just decorated that a little bit, inked it up. So, I mean, um, nothing fancy, nothing new, it's just, um, you want some tags that are got a little thickness to them and you want to be able to write on the back so why not use some of your book pages to give you that thickness and then you know, I have a lot of these papers that I collected from notebooks and stuff that you know can be write, written on the back so I like the lined one and that dotted one so anyway so I did that and decorated a couple of those and then I have a whole stack I mean a whole stack of blank ones over there just waiting for something to happen to them but you can use up quite a few book pages in a hurry there. And then what did I do here? Let's see. Okay, same principle as what I just showed. I have some pictures I cut out of magazines. So they're too flimsy and they're, so, you know, the way they are to use. So I wanna, you know, normally you would say glue it onto cardstock. Well, why not glue it onto a couple layers of book pages? It's the same thing, it gives you the thickness and you use up book pages at the same time. So here's one I've done. I've glued it to the book page, and I did not put the lined paper in the back because I'm gonna make this a pocket. So if I was gonna make it a tag like this one, I did put some lined paper on the back. And I have like two layers of book page and the lined paper. I glued the card on, I glued the uh, journaling card on there fairly well. Now the, the other pages, I try, I did a little bit more than I did on the a tag one because I'm not sure I will sew or not, but we'll see what it's like comes out as. And you have leftover paper, you know, quite a bit, but you know what? I'm still using the pages. I'm using that lined paper, so I don't feel bad about throwing all this away. I got some use out of it. So there's me, a, a, there's me, there's a <laughs> journaling card. Pretty on the front, line paper on the back, and the thickness is from book pages and not cardstock. So I used up some book pages. So anyway, that's just what um, I'm doing with these little flimsy ones. It's uh, using book pages to make them thicker. And uh, I probably will run that, I know I will run the sewing machine around that, but if I forget, it's still fine. Because I have forgotten in the past. Okay, now the other day I was watching a video from Wendy and she was just flipping through one of her journals and I saw this pocket she had and I think she mentioned she made it out of cardstock and if she did something else with cardstock I didn't quite catch it but I just saw it on the oh those are easy to make and I've made them before and I forgot about them so why not get busy making them again and it's like these corner I don't know not corner chucks I don't know what you would call it but it's a tuck you would glue it on your page you know on the L here and then tuck something in here so I thought, you know what? Why make it out of cardstock when you got a stockpile of book pages? So these are pretty sturdy. They're as thick as cardstock, I mean as um, chipboard. And I glued five pages together. And then I, I had a ruler with me. I was just sitting in my chair and just kind of did a, because I was using uh, Reader's Digest books and they are the perfect size for these. So I just, um, use my ruler to draw straight lines and then cut it out and then took it to the sewing machine later and stitched around it. But then I thought, you know, I, I traced around it and made myself a template for the future so I can glue all those book pages together, you know, like I did over here. And so I wouldn't put the lined paper on it. I just glue like four or five pages together, put my template down, trace around it, cut it out. You can either make sure it's glued real well or you can stitch it and it makes a little um, tuck. Now. Uh, of course, and I made some different sizes, just depending. So that one's a little bigger. And then I made some smaller ones. 
It's real easy because it's all straight lines and you just get some chipboard and um, just start drawing you some templates. So those are ready. And I definitely have a whole lot more book pages I can be gluing together at night and then cutting out and having a bunch of blanks ready to go. Now, I wanted to show you how I decorated these two. I was at Goodwill the other day. I actually found one open. And I went in and got a couple of books, you know, like I needed more, but uh, couldn't help it. Anyway, I got this napkin set too, and I, I, it was just like this. That's all I could see. If it was on, I, I didn't, I didn't know. Remember looking at the back? It might have been covered up. I don't know, but I saw this, and I'm definitely getting it for the ivy. I love ivy. Always love ivy. And how can you say no to that watering can? So anyway, when I got home and folded it out, I was really pleased to see this beehive in the corner. And then um, there's a bee around here somewhere. There's a bee. And then you got all these little images that would be great on um, tags and faux stamps and everything. So this was a buy that I got at Goodwill, so I loved it. So anyway, I made, um, I decorated these two tucks. And I haven't trimmed this one up yet. I used napkin, Mod Podge, and uh, I just tore out some of that ivy. And then there's my beehive and the bee. And just did two of them the same because I'm going to do two bee journals. That's my goal. So anyway, you can they, these can be decorated any way you want, of course. And it can be any size. So anyway, I have this many I did in one night. I didn't sew them in one night, but got them all cut out and ready to go. So anyway, that's another thing I was doing with book pages. It's for the bee journal. And then this one is not specifically for the bee journals, but I was working on it at the same time. I got the idea from Pam at the paper outpost, and she was making book markers. And basically, you take a piece of chipboard, uh, not chipboard, uh, stuff that comes in the mail, the postcards. And uh, have, has anyone noticed that how there's not near as many coming out now since we've been shut down? So definitely the junk mail has been reduced. But anyway, uh, you get these postcards in the mail, and you just cut them to whatever size you want. And then you just take a book page, and it could be any old book page you want, and you make sure, you know, it will wrap around like that. And she was pretty particular about, you know, cutting it to fit, and I'm like, nah, I don't... Well, I'm not sure. She, I'll take that back. I'm not sure she did that or not. Um, I'm going to say she did, but I'm not sure. So I'm not going to say that. So um, all I'm saying is glue this on. And if you're concerned about the middle of the picture on the front, you might kind of line it up a little bit, but it doesn't really matter. And then you're going to glue. Um, I'm gonna, I like those holes. So I'm going to fold this over. And you use the edge of this. Um, make sure I'm in frame because who knows you use the edge of the postcard to help you fold it now see that's way too wide so I'm just going to take my scissors and cut it down a little bit and it doesn't matter if I get it straight because this side is going to fold over and hide my raw edges yeah see that's pretty good I'm sliding around here so um, come on glue She has a good video on it. Just um, If you're a member of her Facebook page, it's under her uh, units, and it's one of the challenges is to make bookmarks. Okay, now you're going to glue this side. And fold that over. I think she actually has two challenges about bookmarks, so it, this one was the first one. Okay, so that gives you um, a covered piece of... Um, milling and then I just go in and I can feel where that edge is and I just come up a little bit from it so I know I've got it covered and that's it now you can do things with it you can take it to your sewing machine and stitch around it you can add pictures on top of it like I did to these two these were just plain text bookmarks and I added that picture and this one was like from a children's um, glossary and I just added that picture. Now, if you want to write on the back, use it as a journaling card. You know, it could be a tuck, it could be a belly band, whatever. Then you can add some paper on the back. And I'll just get some, just get a book page. It's got some blank um, paper and just cut it to fit and glue it down. And then you'll have some journaling spots on the back. So anyway, made a few of those. And, you know, I make them and I make them. These are just journaling cards until I'm like, okay, I got way more than I'll ever use. But these are from that old five ring binder 
um, gardening books. So anyway, I'll put these over here with my blank uh, tags and cards and uh, not cards, journaling cards. So when I need them, I've got them ready to decorate. So that was that thing I was doing. And now this next batch of stuff is other things I'm working on, not necessarily with book pages, but just thought I'd show you real quick, get it all out. Okay, one thing is I found somewhere these B uh, playing cards. So I just took some paper, like I just talked about for the back of the bookmarks, tore it to fit, inked it up, and glued it on there. And I used an emery board to kind of rough up the uh, surface so it would stick better. And now I got a cute little journaling card for my book, so I did that. Um, used up a box of Kleenex. I like the yellow flowers. The colors work. So I'm going to take this to my trimmer and straighten it up a little bit. Cut off the puff. I may keep the puffs. I don't know. But I'll straighten it up and then I'm going to use it as a tuck or a pocket in the journal. So I have that. Now I was cleaning out and I found a sack of, I should have kept one to show you. See if you remember them. Uh, three and a half inch floppy disk, the plastic kind that go on the computer. Found a whole bunch of them. So, you know, those went to file 13. And then a lot of them had the labels that go on the um, disk. And I thought, you know, those are sticky labels. Those can be little journaling spots. So I had several different varieties in that collection of disk I had. And there was one that had a pretty green on it. So here's red ones with no writing on there. So I thought, you know, you just never know what you're going to find in your stash that you didn't even know you had. See, that says cool disc. So anyway, it's kind of a little dirty there, but those are, are, I'm not sure what that is. It's not really dirt. Who knows? Anyway, so uh, those would be fun to include, in, you know, in journals. And then, of course, I made some corner tucks, just folded book page, stitched around it. And then this was something I made um, out of a guest check, just did different collaging and put that little image on the front. This is a, um, I showed these envelopes earlier. I made them out of a, um, it was the bartender's book and I just stitched them, glued them. And then since they were shiny, I went over them with the clear gesso, which is right here off camera. And then I just put a little collage on there. So that'd be ready for a journal. And then this is a Willidex card. And I've seen shown these quite a bit. I had them for sale on my Etsy shop till just this week, and a lady uh, contacted me and wanted to buy the cards and the wheel. So I have a few left, but all the rest of them, there were about 3,000 cards left, went to her, and she's got a great project planned for them. But anyway, I just inked around it, and I did two different background stamps, two different colors of ink, and then I had that image cut from my magazine, and just have a little journaling card for my bee journal. So anyway, that's what I've been doing. Um, I've also been cleaning out, you can't tell it, to look at it, because, you know, the more stuff you pull out to go through, the worse things look. But anyway, making a little progress, so I will talk to you guys later, and I'm not sure what I'm doing next, but we'll see. So thanks for watching. Bye. Hi, everyone. This is Cindy, and I just went to my mailbox and found this little envelope from Robin. I'm calling it a pocket of happiness. She knows I've been needing some um, pick-me-up, and she sent me another little happy mail, so I appreciate it. I even appreciate, really, that great stamp there. She'll definitely become a, one, uh, become a part of one of my journals. Uh, let's see what's in here. I have no idea. She has told me other things she sent was sending but I'm not sure about this packet so oh another rat card we have this little thing going on about rats I just can't understand why people are fascinated by rats but of course these are very cute rats and not very realistic rats thank goodness so it's a little hello oh she sent me some embossing yeah that's great oh it's music records ha huh. at least that's what I think it is those are fun, Robin. I will have to put those in my stash of music stuff. I I finally forgot. Um, yeah, she found a different embossing folder she forgot. Yeah, that's cool. And I like your card too, Robin. I found uh, a digi kit on music that I liked. Whenever I first started doing the music journals, I couldn't find anything I liked. And then after I finished them, I found a music kit. So I was debating, oh no, should I buy it or not? Well, I think I just might do it because um, 
yeah, I'm getting more stuff. And, you know, digging through my stash, I find stuff. Oops, I forgot that, you know, that sort of thing. So anyway, thank you, Robin. This is fun. It was an unexpected surprise today. And I will uh, talk to you guys later. Bye.